The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms good morning i'm nico dehan and it's a beautiful morning in downtown clear or St. Petersburg, uh, 73 degrees and showers, and it's going up to about 75, something like that today, but it's going to be mild, kind of nice. We need the rain, so that's good. Uh, this is not going to last too long. It's kind of drizzling out there today. Uh, I'd like to remind you, first of all, of course, pick up our uh, Health Signals newsletter. You can do that by going to services in the TFNN site there, and at the bottom you'll see the Primal Edge Daily Nutrition and our Health Signals newsletters, both of which are involved in the show. Of course, the Primal uh, Edge is our one-shot wonder, has uh, over uh, 310 cell-ready ingredients, all to make it healthy. Of course, the Health Signals newsletter follows the show, so you can do your own research on what we're talking about. I got a chance to see Paige uh, over the weekend, so it was really nice. She looks great, I'll tell you. And the in injury she has, uh, you know, we have in our ankle we have three major bones in her ankle. She broke all three of them. It's a major thing, and people have died from this. There's a certain percentage that just don't do well on it. And uh, because of the balance and everything, all those three bones have to be wired together. But uh, she showed me the scars and everything like that. I mean, if you ever want a testament on how lifestyle, how good eating, the primal edge, and all the stuff that we do and talk about on the show reveal themselves, this is how they do it, because she just looks fantastic. One of the things she was saying is that the nurse practitioner was telling her, you know, when this cast comes off, most of the time you have real problems. There's usually infections in there because the surgery so, was so drastic. You have to go in from both sides. And she says, don't be, you know, when you look at this after the cast is off, don't be concerned. This is what we go through, and you probably have to adjust. Well, they took the cast off, and they couldn't believe it. There was nothing. I mean, there was not even ridges where the cuts were made. Uh, it was a beautiful thing, and she looks really wonderful. She's going to be back next week, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, the other thing is, is uh, I have a wedding anniversary with my wife, Ellen, 24 years today. So we're celebrating that, and we've been celebrating that, and uh, it's a beautiful thing, and I love you, baby. So we're looking for 24 more or more, maybe 48. Who knows? I want to start off the show today about uh, the pork industry. Now, um, back in, I think it was 2013, I've got an article here. Who is behind the Chinese takeover or over the world's biggest pork producer? Now, the biggest pork producer is Smithy, uh, Smithfields. Uh, and it was acquired by the Ch a Chinese firm in 2013 for nearly $5 billion, more than the company's market value. The, uh, the surprise purchase caused some lawmakers to wonder if there might be a hidden player. As part of, a, of the series Food for Nine Billion, uh, Nathan Havelson of the Center of Investigative Reporting examines how the Chinese government is involved in this. And this is, comes from PBS, and they have a transcript here about the show. Uh, Nathan says the Treasury Department approved the deal last September a special committee which meets behind closed doors to evaluate foreign purchases of American companies reviewed the acquisition to assess whether it posed a threat to national security focusing on the defense, uh, military defense. So uh, the company uh, was Shanghai, is the name of the company, S-H-U-A-N-G-H-U-I. And uh, the, it was approved by the government's uh, Chinese government's bank, the Bank of China, approved $4 billion loan to buy this. And they did it in a single day. 
So Bank of China is owned by the government of China also. So that's kind of concerning. Um, some other things they say in uh, 2011, the government issued a five-year plan directing food companies such as Shanghai to obtain more meat for their production lines by purchasing overseas businesses. Uh, they took a tour of the plant. Uh, the Chinese government has been supporting this company with their preferential, uh, per peripheral uh, policy. I guess it's a policy uh, that they really like, so that's why they're financially and politically supporting this, and this is why they got the loan. Uh, the other thing, let's see, anything else in here? Uh, he says, I don't think it's, uh, I could go out today and get the U.S. government to support making a $4 billion loan as a social responsibility for, Smithy, uh, for Smithfield to move forward on a foreign country's territory. So apparently, so Smithfield being the largest pork producer in the world is now owned by a Chinese firm that borrowed the money from the Chinese bank and the bank is owned by the Chinese. So that's kind of the, the start of this whole thing that I saw. Then I went on to look at a couple of more sites. And here's a thing by Reuters, say Chinese buy U.S. pork despite the tariffs as hog disease spreads. So in China, they're loading up on pork, and they're having a real problem there because they have the swine flu over there. It's the Afri African swine flu is raising concern of the eventual supply shortfall, potentially suspending trade tensions between the world's two largest economy brokers. Uh, it's kind of like, why would you buy from your enemy, and Chinese buy, being our enemy? But in this new uh, thing that I'm reading, this is 2018, November 29th, they don't mention that the company they're buying it from is Smitty, that company, uh, and they don't mention it, that it's owned by Chinese. They're just saying here, well, Chinese has uh, imposed tariffs also on U.S. farmers, uh, blah, blah, blah. But now November uh, 22nd of 2018, they bought 3,348 tons of pork to be shipped this year. So they're buying lots of pork from around the world and from us. Now, another article I have here talking about Chinese, the uh, world's largest consumer of pork, made its biggest purchase of meat from the U.S. in nearly two years. So again, this is uh, March 14, 2019. The Asian country bought 23,800 metric tons in a week ending March 7th of this year, the largest sale since April of 2017 and is the third largest going back to the 2013. And again, in here, they really don't mention that they're buying it from Smitty. So it's kind of sick here that uh, now it's kind of hidden before they were saying we're buying it now. So I don't really get the thing, but uh, I think I'll wait until after the break. But th this is concerning me. So we get the largest pork industry person being bought or company being bought by the company in uh, China that is loaned the money by the Bank of China, which is owned by the Chinese government. So that, and that's just the beginning of it. We got more coming. So right after break, uh, I'll be right back. Meanwhile, please pick up our primal edge, our one-shot wonder. It's a beautiful thing. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Pork industry in 2013, uh, the largest company, Smithfield, uh, was purchased by a company in China, uh, and it was uh, loaned money. Uh, the uh, Bank of China loaned the money to that company, and of course, the Bank of China is owned by the Chinese government. So there we have connections. So now we have something new that just popped up, and this is really the reason I brought this whole thing up. I was talking about this uh, to Tom O'Brien Saturday when he was working out, or Thursday maybe it was. Pork industry will soon have more power over meat inspections. So the Trump administration plans to shift much of the power and responsibility for food safety inspections in hog plants to the pork industry as early as this May of 2019, cutting the number of federal inspections by about 40% and replacing them with the plant employees. Under the proposed new inspection plan, the responsibility for identifying disease and contaminated pork would be shared with plant employees whose training would be at the discretion of the plant owners, the Chinese, I think. Uh, there will be no limits on the slaughter line speed, so this will allow them to speed up the line. No longer will you have a USDA inspector on the line inspecting the pork as it goes on. It'll be done by employees if they want to, apparently. A new pork inspection system would accelerate the federal government's move towards delegating inspections to the livestock industry. During the Obama administration, poultry plant owners were given more power over safety inspections, although that administration uh, canceled plans to increase line speeds. The Trump administration in September allowed some poultry plants to increase line speeds. Uh, and, of course, if you're increasing line speeds, that means you're producing more of whatever you're producing, which means you'll have a higher profit. And this, again, is another example of that money over everything else. These proposals, part of the administration's... Um, Oh, there's also... Uh, the administration is also working to shift inspections of beef to plant owners. Agriculture Department officials are scheduled next month to discuss the proposed changes within the meat industry. So these proposals, part of the administration's broader efforts to reduce regulations, come as the federal government is under fire for delegating some of its aircraft safety oversight inspections to Boeing, which developed the 30, uh, 737 MAX jets. And they were, of course, involved in those two uh, tragic um, 
and fatal crashes over the past six months. Federal Aviation Administration certifications of two aircraft involved in the crashes took place under t uh, President Trump, but the major shift towards delegating key aspects of aviation oversight began during the George W. Bush administration. So slowly but surely, we've been whacking away no matter what administration is going. Some a little bit slower, some a little bit faster. Right now, we're kind of in the faster mode. And this is the plan for, you know, we can kind of police ourselves, which in the past has been very, very bad. Uh, uh, look at the FAA. It took uh, a year or so before the crash happened. This could pass and everything would be okay for a while until some disease is missed and we all have a breakout all over the country. Uh, and this is concerning. Uh, this is, comes from Pat Baso, who's the uh, chief veterinarian with the USDA Food Safety Inspection Service, and he was there from 2016 to 2018. He refused to sign off on the new pork system because of safety concerns for consumers and the livestock, too. The USDA sent the proposed regulations to the Federal Register for about a week uh, after he left, and they were published less than a month later. So he says this is a bad thing. Basil's top concern is with the plan, uh, giving the plant workers the responsibility for identifying and removing uh, live diseased hogs when they arrive at the plant. He said the job should re remain with trained USDA vet veterinarians so they can identify the contagious diseases like foot and mouth disease, uh, which maim and destroy livestock, creating profound effects on the economy. One analysis by the Kansas State University researchers determined such an outbreak, outbreak could cost producers and the public $188 billion and state federal governments $11 billion. The National Pork Producers Council, the association for the $20 billion pork industry, said the new system will create more symbiotic relationship with USDA workers who will partner with the pork industry to better ensure the safety in the workplace according to the papers. Uh, the USDA officials declined interviews, saying they will not speak publicly about the new regulations until they're finalized. In the past, the, and this will be finalized in May. In the past, the officials of USDA Food Safety Inspection Service has defended their efforts to transfer more control over food safety oversight to the pork industry. They said federal inspectors will spend less time assessing the quality of the pork, gives them more time to look for disease and contamination. But if they're not there, how can they look for that? Food-borne industries' uh, illness, as they say, typically come from microscopic pathogens and are best detected through testing. More emphasis will be placed on preventing contamination rather than reacting to it afterwards, they said. Um, these uh, inspection systems have evolved since the 1980s and will continue to do so. We cannot do things the same way as we've always done them. However, the USDA officials confirmed there are no plans under the new uh, system to test for salmonella, for which the USDA DA tested. The agencies will agency will rely heavily on uh, pathogen testing by plant owners, but those results will not be made public. There's no disclosure in this. The hog plants also no longer required to test for E. coli, the re records show. Uh, John Ferguson is a former USDA hog inspector who retired in 2015 after working 23 years under the traditional inspection system, as well as with the trial program that created the proposed system. He said federal regulators lost control when the plant workers subplanted them. Hog carcasses, carcasses whizzed by him and the plant inspectors at so speed, so much speed uh, that fecal contamination, important indicator of E. coli and salmonella could not be detected. So these, the problem some of these inspectors are saying when you go too fast, you can't really spot the small little things like the salmonella, which is usually spotted by scraping something and testing it, that type of thing. The proposed, uh, let's see, all uh, power gets handed over to the plant, Ferguson says. I saw the alleged inspections that were performed by plant workers. They weren't inspections. They were supposed to exceed the USDA standards. I never saw that happen. The proposed 
uh, hog slaughter rule is based on a study that began 20 years ago, ultimately including five large plants. Efforts to expand the program have sputtered under past administrations, but to the Trump administration, officials told the industry trade groups they can expect the proposed regulations to be soon finalized. They saw, say 40 of the 612 hog plants will begin using the new system. So this is the new thing. And the shrinking staff, naturally the USDA, uh, 35 of the 40 plants uh, will have, uh, let's see, from 365 down to 218 uh, inspectors. Uh, they'll save about $6 million annually. And uh, they'll increase profits more than $2 million. So out of $6 million that they save, $2 million is profit. That's pretty nice profit. Food Africa say that uh, giving more control to the plants is a step away from blah, 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 naturally. So I recommend buying pork from a small farmer near your home, folks. I'll be right back. Stick around. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
and welcome back. So with the pork industry being compromised and soon the beef industry, poultry industry, it becomes much more important for us to seek out purveyor that's close to you, small farm, that doesn't go under these types of regulations and ty types of things that are sold to other, uh, to other governments, really, in a sense. But also the inspection process now is being diminished more and more. It wasn't that great to begin with, but at least we had a chance you know now they're going to be relying on the on the uh, the consumers really to report problems and then kind of figure out where this comes from this is not a good sign so it becomes very important for us to find good purveyors uh, a farmer perhaps somebody close by somebody that you can talk to that you know doesn't happen this way there's another uh, assault on us too of course uh, they de have been de demonizing meat uh, these last few years has been going on for a long time, really, but it seems like more and more. Of course, with the you know Burger King and lots of the fast food chains now are getting the al uh, alternative uh, meat, so made out of soybean, tastes just like it's supposedly whatever. I don't even want to get near that stuff. But here's another one that, uh, <laughs> and this is even crazier, folks: turning wood into food. So converting uh, wood into food has enabled an American agricultural biotechnical company called Arbium to share in 10.9 million uh, euros of EU, uh, EU funding. They have successfully produced tons of its high-protein sile pro protein pr production from timber. This product could be well could be a modern equivalent of the ancient alchemy's dream of turning base metals into gold because there's a growing deficit of sustainable protein across the global food and agricultural industry for animal food feed alone. So they're going to start with the animal food. Believe me, this is probably going to sink in. Uh, no, if we just add a little percentage, it's not going to do any harm. So, of course, we, on living a primal lifestyle, love to feed our animals the best food possible so they, in return, can return it back to us. This is the philosophy we have on living a primal lifestyle, and it's part of the paleo, a part of the ketone type of philosophy that we need to eat closer to wild, the closest to wild as possible, let's put it that way. Uh, domesticated meat is not the best. We know that wild is better. But now the domesticated meat, and it's financially, it's probably the only meat that a lot of people can afford because the other stuff is more expensive. Although I've said many times when you start going paleo or uh, with the ketone type of diet, you're going to eat less. So slowly but surely over that first year, you're going to realize that you've been eating way too much. I eat way less than I've ever eaten now because of this, and it's a very liberating thing. So this product could uh, well be the modern equivalent of the ancient alcohol. Okay, I read that already. For uh, animal food alone, the global protein ingredients market is set to surpass $200 billion by 2024. Soybean remains the most important and preferred choice uh, of high-quality vegetable protein for animal feed. But there is over-dependence on soy and its cultivation as it dri drives deforestation. Not something I want my animals eating, for sure. The use of fish protein in animal food put pressure on the uh, ocean ecosystems. And you've got to think how many cattle or pigs eat fish. Maybe a pig would once in a while, but uh, it's a little hard for them to catch it, I think. Uh, the use of fish protein in animal food puts pressure on the ocean ecosystems. Because of these and other market factors, prices for protein are undoubtedly going to rise in the future. So finding sustainable and affordable local produced alternatives is seen as critical. There's a huge amount of innovation and in alternative protein ingredients from insects to methane-based products. But the RBM's uh, Sile Pro has become the front runner. A more sustainable alternatives with minimal, minimal impact on the environment, less land and water is required for its production. Uh, it gained extra global exposure last week at the Global Summit <clears throat> staged by the Hilo Tomorrow organization, which is based on a mission to unlock power of new technologies to tackle the world's toughest environmental and social in, uh, and industrial problems, I guess. Out of 4,500 uh, 4, projects which took part, uh, RBM was one of 70 startup companies selected as finalists to pitch, 
to a selected audience of 400 industry experts and investors in Paris. So they featured uh, in the industrial bio category. It was uh, not one and was not one of 12 winners, so they didn't win. But uh, it's Helio Tomorrow Global Challenge appearance follows earlier participations in the high profile European Forum on Industrial Biotechnological Aquaculture Innovation Showcase. That's quite a title. The Global Summit of Paris was another opportunity for them to showcase the new technology for converting, for converting wood into protein-rich feed. Last year, uh, RBM was one of 12 winners in the U.S. of uh, the Trial Business Journal Life Sciences Award for its work in transforming wood, the most sustainable and readily available carbon source in the world, into intermediate purposes or uh, materials for apl applications in feed, food production, and chemical industries. So, of course, they're not feeding 100% of this. They're just putting it in the feed like, like they do the cow parts, like they do the fish parts, like they do the soy, and like they do the fertilizers and all the other stuff with the other things. Uh, more, let's see, Cypro is more than 60% crude protein with enhanced amino acid profile and digestible for use in animal feed. I wonder how they determine this. I'd like to see the study of going through the animals and determining that it's good for them. Uh, Cypro is a nutritional, economical, traceable, and sustainable protein-rich ingredient developed to solve the challenges of protein sourcing and improve gut health in the aquaculture and livestock. Uh, technically, it is an enhanced strain of Torrilla yeast, Candida utilis, a globally approved feed and food ingredient with a history of safe use. The breakthrough production of this in tons uh, enables Arbium to launch several animal feed trials in order to validate its nutritional quality as a protein source for several species, including salmon, tilapia, hybrid striped mass in the uh, aquaculture, along with uh, weanlingling pigs and a number of pet animals. I wouldn't feed this to my pets, I'll tell you that. Trial performance data measured the growth rate, the body weight, the feed intake, the feed conversion ratio will be available to the public. I don't think the public. It says available in 2019, it doesn't say public. Uh, more studies to assess additional uh, nutritional benefits are going to be taking place this year. Uh, IBM will hope to confirm that it has significant benefits over other protein sources such as feed, uh, fish meal and so soy protein. And it's on the par with whey protein concentrate for nutritional quality. Headquarters in Jury, North Carolina. Funding has been awarded by the EU, so they're not funding it themselves. They're getting a loan, apparently. And uh, also involved are Pyron, a global leader, and there's other companies, and they, they have other companies doing this too, so this will be interesting to follow. Stick around, folks. I got a new segment coming in, and we're going to be talking about compresses and poultices, and this is really interesting. So stick around, I'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information welcome back to the show you know part of my job here is to uh, find uh, different ways of being healthy and uh, i have uh, a couple of companies that send me books to review and this is one of them that i received last week natural compressors and poultices uh, safe and simple folk medicine treatments for 70 common conditions and this was written by christopher vassi and d and this is a fascinating book of course this is the type of uh, medicinal uh, techniques that we use for thousands and thousands of years. This is a probably a catalog that's been built up over thousands of years of medicine men and people, and this is all we use probably till around the turn of the last uh, the 1900s, 18 to 1900s, when we when the MD, uh, AMA started uh, policing health conditions. Uh, I would say, when suffering from headache, toothache, indigestion. Uh, uh, painful uh, menstrual periods, joint inflammation, nerve pain, cough, and so on, the patient's primary desire, even before that being cured, is to find rapid relief from pain and suffering. So what is the most effective non-pharmaceutical way of someone who is not a health care professional uh, to do this? A simple way that can be easily done by anyone is using materials that you probably already have on hand. It is the uses of compresses and poultices. When applied to an ailing part of the body, a compress or poultice can make the patient feel better immediately. It can soothe pain, reduce swelling of inflamed tissues, relax the patient, take an active role in the healing process. It, applying one of these remedies is extremely easy, and the necessary ingredients of materials, which are scrapes of cloth, onions, potato, and so forth, are usually right, uh, ready immediately. They're usually in your home. Rapid relief can therefore be easily and quickly achieved in all circumstances, even if no professional health practitioner or prescription is available. Compresses and poultices are not only useful for first aid, they also provide valuable treatments for existing illnesses, whether chronic or acute. But we would be mistaken to believe that compresses and poultices can cure all disorders. While it is true that in certain cases they represent the most appropriate treatment, in other instances they are merely a backup or, uh, backup or complementary treatment. In these cases their use will not be sufficient to adequately treat the condition. If compresses and poultices were highly valued by your grandmothers and the traditional medical practices of many countries through the uh, 
centuries, it is because they provided a healing method for a quick and effective uh, treatment. In addition, they should not be uh, underestimated in our modern times. They offer natural, non-toxic methods for healing. And that's really what they do. Uh, they've been used for thousands of years as a, as a healing method. Both are used to relieve burns and abscesses and skin infections, boils, infections, any kind of infections. They can be used for external and also internal ailments. They are not used as much in modern times because there's a bit more time consuming to compare to the herbal capsules or just popping a pill, I guess. And of course we have uh, natural doctors around that can help you with these things. And there's many different types of compresses too, so I'd like to go over a few of them. I have them here listed. Get the, oops, wrong way. Twelve old school remedies that work. And the first one is witch hazel for uh, pain relief and itching. Which hazel is like a gentler version of rubbing alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. It can be used on the skin as a skin toner, but it also has amazing anti-itch properties and produces pain relief. These are great for cuts and stings and insect bites, scrapes, abrasion. It also helps for healing bruises and takes the swelling down. Which hazel is great for kids for relief from those conditions because it does not sting as much as rubbing alcohol. Next one is uh, peppermint tea for gas and bloating. If your stomach is in knots or if that bloating and gassy feeling just won't leave you alone, try brewing some peppermint tea. Peppermint herb is also known as slow spasms of the intestines and colon, which can provide relief for diarrhea and cramping. It's purposely soothing to, uh, purposely soothing to the stomach and can ev help evaluate, alleviate, excuse me, gas. Peppermint tea also refreshes the breath, provides a good source of fluid, minus the dehydration effects of caffeine or alcohol that you would have. It has zero calories as long as you skip the sugar. Number three, Epsom salts for muscle aches. This is probably one that everybody knows. You can soak in the tub for a little while, and it's great, and it works really well, and it's a natural product, so it's great. Here's one I didn't really know. Chocolate for a cough. How about that? We've got to keep that chocolate on hand, folks. It's pretty much universally accepted that chocolate is good and coughs are bad. But what is uh, goodness and deliciousness of chocolate? Uh, what if it could help alleviate the cough? It turns out that may be true. Uh, the compound uh, therabromine found in chocolate is effective in suppressing tricky coughs, perhaps even more so than the regular cough drops or cough syrups. If nothing else, it will be better than uh, consuming codeine, which is often used in the cough syrups to suppress the coughs. As far as lozenges go, many have sugar in them, and they're often suffering, pers uh, and those suffering pers from persistent dry coughs would rather get their sugar from delicious chocolate, <laughs> of course. And number five. Apples for tummy troubles. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, ever, ever chat with a friend whose no-fail stomach or hangover cures includes eating an apple? If that sounds more unlikely antidote, consider that apples, like bananas, are a good source of pectin. Pectin helps break down and flush away various food uh, particles that could be irritating the stomach. While apples are good, sipping apple juice instead could make stomach ailments, including diarrhea, even worse. That's because of the sugar content of juice, which could, could lead to more diarrhea. And apples tend to see, be the cause of the upset stomach. Try cooking them, not raw. An apple a day may really keep the doctor away. How about that? And number six, salt water and sore throats. I've heard of this one before. My mother used to tell me that. Feel pain and throbbing of sore throat coming on? Skip the lozenge. Head straight for the kitchen instead, dissolving the plain table salt in hot water produces a very effective throat wrench that could, uh, should be garlic for, uh, gargled, <laughs> excuse me, for at least 30 seconds. For a guide to quantities, try a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt in eight ounces of water, not boiling water, just warm water. And then rinse, uh, the rinse can poten potentially kill the bacteria in the throat uh, that is making you sore. Gargling with the rinse also may remove some of the mucus and some of the other stuff that's in there. Remember not to swallow it. Number seven, another one I recognize. I'm doing pretty good on this. Uh, lavender for sleep. Uh, 
Dried lavender tucked between the sheets in linen uh, closets to make them smell fresh can be effective in repelling moss and other insects. But that's not the only reason why this habit has been practiced for centuries. The studies from the uh, Mayo Clinic show that lavender is effective in relieving headaches and anxiety as well as promoting sleep and relaxing sleep deep and relaxing sleep. Lavender is also a concentrated form, so it can be used uh, easiest to derive the benefits from that rather than dry. The oil can be inhaled. You can use it as incense, things like that. Let's go to number eight. Eight, uh, baking soda for insect bites and removing splinters. And baking soda is another substance with a variety of amazing uses. So when we get back, we'll finish this. Uh, pretty cool. All right, folks, uh, try to pick up some Primal Edge during the break. Uh, pick up the Health Signals newsletter. I have a brand new one coming out next week, so uh, look for that one, and uh, I will be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Hi, and welcome back. I'm reading from this book, uh, Natural Compresses and Poultices. It's a great book, Christopher Vassi. You can find this on Amazon or just about everywhere else. It's out. Uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, baking soda, and a paste of uh, baking soda and water is also effective in relieving pain and itching from insect bites, stings after icing the area pet dry and then apply the paste 
for as long as it's tolerated. Uh, number nine is olive oil for whitening teeth and better uh, breath. This remedy is called oil pilling. It can be uh, performed with any high-grade pure oils from coconut to olive to sesame. Sesame is what I use. The tip involves gargling. Uh, I don't think gargling. More like swishing uh, with a, about a tablespoon or so of oil. The ancient... Uh, method includes doing this for about 20 minutes, uh, which may be not possible for some people. It's a little difficult in the beginning, but once you get used to it, uh, it uh, is easier. The bottom line, the practice is associated with whiter teeth, reducing gingivitis, and fresher breath. It also moisturizes your lips. Some claim oil pulling has additional health benefits, no studies to prove it, blah, blah, blah. And number 10 is penitin for cream, a sticky penitin. It's used in diaper stuff. This uh, is an uh, urban legend, a tip whispered at summer camps and in college dorms and involves dotting that thick, sticky penitent diaper cream onto pimples in an attempt to shrink it. Does it work? Turns out that there may be some truth to this practice. Benetton cream contains zinc oxide, which is effective and, yeah, it kind of dries it out. So but if you have a lot of uh, pimples and stuff like that, look at your diet. It's probably your diet that's doing it, eating lots of grains and bread and things like that. Number 11, the eucalyptus oil for colds and bronchitis. And steam rooms and spas and uh, yoga studios have diffusers that uh, have the uh, eucalyptus smell, and it's amazing. It immediately conjures up feelings of relaxation and well-being. Plus, there's a reason that Vicks va Vapor Rub has long time been the go-to help for the colds and coughs. Eucalyptus helps calm the cough and opens up the nasal passages and the tighter chest. Number 12 is uh, honey for wound healing. And this is a lot of people don't think about this, but uh, honey is a really good thing, and especially when you're talking about that New Zealand uh, honey, the uh, uh, Maleka, I think it's called. That's the show today, folks. I'll be shooting all this stuff in the Health Signals newsletter so you can do your own research, and next week we'll see you with Paige Clark. See you then. Bye-bye.